Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Today, I want to give you 10 reasons why people hit their breaking point with the narcissist and then 10 results of what happens when they hit that breaking point. So what I mean by a breaking point, first of all, is when you know that there's no way that you can make this work anymore. There's no way that you can keep lying to yourself, that you can keep making excuses for the narcissist behavior, and that something has to change, that you have to leave or separate from the narcissist. So first of all, the number one reason why people stay with a narcissist is fear of being alone. They are truly afraid that they have invested so much time with the narcissist that there's just no way that they could ever find another partner. They think they've wasted their best years, the best moments of their life with this person, and they don't want to face the possibility that they would end up alone. And so in these people's minds, it's better to be with somebody and although it's chaotic, it's extremely toxic, it's very damaging to who they are, it's better than being alone. It's better than being single. The second reason is because they feel they're not good enough or they're not worthy of love. The self-esteem factor has been uh, has been used against them. The narcissist has used uh, all of the the small things, the small imperfections about a person. And a lot of times these things aren't even real. They're perceived, but the person starts listening to the voice of the narcissist so long that they end up believing the narcissist. They they come into agreement with those words and they they view themselves as unworthy, which also makes it difficult for them to leave the narcissist when it's coupled with the first reason, right? The fear of being alone. So you have somebody who has very low self-esteem, but very low self-worth and couple that with the fear of being alone. And it makes it even more difficult to leave the narcissist. Of course, emotional manipulation is another huge one where the narcissist will use guilt and fear. Uh, and especially the the lack of trust in oneself against you to keep you right where you are. Another huge reason why people stay with a narcissist is because of the financial dependence. And typically when people come to understand that this is a hurdle that is able to be crossed, that this is not an, an obstacle, but it's actually an opportunity to push further to get even more freedom, even more independence from the narcissist, that also turns into a breaking point. Once they come to a realization that, hey, there is a way forward for me, that also makes it easier for the person to leave. The fifth most common reason why a person will stay with a narcissist is because they believe that they their love is stronger than the narcissist's problems, right? And so essentially victims feel like they can love the narcissist back into normality and that this person will just all of a sudden start accepting their love and make a change and they're able to have a normal relationship. Again, this is one of the things that you have to overcome in order to hit the breaking point where it's possible for you to break free from the narcissist. Another reason is social pressures. And this is a huge one, especially for people who are involved in some sort of religious community where victims are feeling pressured from not just maybe their family and friends and their cultural or societal norms, but also from their larger community as a whole. Uh, especially if they've been together for a very long time, the social pressure of keeping the family unit together, regardless of what's going on behind closed doors is extremely huge. And again, once somebody comes to the breaking point of understanding that they're an individual, that their identity is not wrapped up into what other people think about them, or the way that they perceive their situation when they are not the ones living it is another thing that helps people reach that breaking point so that they can truly break free from the narcissist. Hope for change is another huge one. And what I mean by this, and the reason that I listed this one separate from the power of love scenario is because this is where the victim feels responsible in some way for how the narcissist is behaving. And 
until they realize that, again, there's not one more therapist you could see. There's not one more book you could read. There's not one more podcast you could listen to to change this person is when they can really start reaching that breaking point and understanding that this is something that's far beyond their control. There isn't anything else that they can do to help this person overcome who they are. And also, when you think about the amount of power, the amount of energy, emotional manipulation, the amount of strategy the narcissist has to put into keeping all of the pawns where they want them, keeping all of the flying monkeys doing what they want them to do. If they were to put that amount of energy into bettering themselves, they certainly could be able to do that. So in other words, if they wanted to, they would. And when victims finally accept the fact that it has nothing to do with them, this is an issue that the narcissist has apart from whatever the victim is doing then they can finally reach that breaking point and break free from the narcissist as well. Of course, there's always the fear of retaliation uh, that comes along with why people stay. But whenever we make fear-based decisions, we are giving fear a place to now make further decisions in our lives, not just with the narcissist, not just with uh, anything that pertains to the narcissist, but every other factor in our lives, right? We start getting afraid to speak up for ourselves. We start getting afraid to advocate for ourselves. This leads to real Uh, setbacks in other ways. Like, for example, if you're not willing to advocate for yourself to get a raise at your job, for example, because you feel unworthy and all of these other things that I've already mentioned in this video, that impacts your economic status, right? It impacts your earning potential. So if you can see that there are Uh, Once you start giving place to fear the domino effect that this has, that also helps people reach the breaking point of when they want to leave the narcissist and get this toxicity out of their lives much quicker. Of course, the trauma bond is a huge reason why people do not leave the narcissist. And until the, the victim can kind of step outside of themselves and see themselves and what is happening to themselves objectively, which is why I'm such a huge believer in documentation. Document every single thing, not just so that you have something for court, but so that you have the the documentation for your own self so that you can go back and see, hey, I wasn't lying. This was something that I truly experienced. This was something that was really said to me. This was something that was really done to me. It's for your own sanity right? So that you can start seeing yourself apart from yourself, like look at your situation from the outside and see if this is something that you would want your children to be in or your best friend to be in. And if the answer is no, then that can usually get people to the breaking point of saying, okay, there's something really wrong in this situation. I'm not my best self when I'm with this person. And no matter what I do, all of my efforts end up in the same, with the same result, which is that the narcissist get, actually gets worse, doesn't ever get better. And that can help people get to the uh, breaking point a lot sooner. And as you know, I specialize in breaking the trauma bond. My, my detox intensive guarantees you to break the trauma bond. It's something that you need in your life. You know that that's what's keeping you with the narcissist. Then I want you to text 512-677-9322 with the word detox in your first name. And let's get started to see if you qualify to join my narcissistic detox intensive. And finally, the last reason is the unquantifiable amount of emotional investment. And by that, I don't just mean the the time and energy that you've spent, you know, going to therapy or finding outside resources to make the situation work. It's the kids, it's the memories, it's the house, it's the things that you have together with the narcissist that are kind of unquantifiable because it's not just the house it's the memories in the house and it's not just the kids it's the memories that you have with the kids the memories that you wanted to have with your children right the the happy christmas morning and everybody doing things together it's the it's the small things that are unquantifiable it's the hopes and the dreams that you're kind of having to say those die when i leave the narcissist i will never have those memories that i wanted to have with this person but the fact of the matter is that whether you come to that realization now while you're with the narcissist or you come to the realization later when you're not with the narcissist, the end is the same. You're still never going to have 
those memories with the narcissist because they want something completely different than you. So I've listed you 10 things that people need to get over, hurdles that people need to come overcome in order to truly break free from the narcissist. I want to also list you 10 things that you get once you finally do get over those things. Once you finally reach the breaking point, what's in it for you? How does your life change? You know, you've done all of this hard work. You've separated yourself from the narcissist. What is it all for? Well, first of all, you're going to be able to get control over your life again. There's no more manipulation, no more demanding, no more leaving you feeling hopeless or powerless, fearful, unable to make decisions for yourselves. Leaving the relationship would allow you to regain control of your life and make choices that align with your values and your goals, not just for yourself, but for your future and for your children as well. There's also freedom from emotional abuse. Narcissistic partners are obviously very emotionally abusive. It's one of the tactics that keeps the gaslighting, the belittling, the demeaning uh, going in the relationship, right? The emotional abuse is, is necessary. It's a necessary factor in keeping you with the narcissist. So that's another thing that you'd be free from. You'd be able to not only escape the abuse, but begin the healing process and start meeting your true authentic self. Of course, your mental health is going to improve. There's no more anxiety, depression, the low self-esteem that you were dealing with when you were with the narcissist. You can prioritize your own mental health. You can start seeking support and resources outside of the relationship, maybe even outside of what the narcissist was allowing you to do when you were in that relationship so that you can start to improve your well-being and your future. You'll also have a restored sense of self-worth. Again, that's a huge reason why people don't leave the narcissist. But honestly, even if you could get to the point of seeing yourself the way the narcissist sees you, right? The narcissist wouldn't be with you if you were truly such a drag, if you uh, really were bringing down their life. They don't want somebody who isn't adding value to them in some way. And so if you could even see yourself the way the narcissist sees you, that you are valuable, that, that you do bring value to the relationship and to life in general, you'd be able to start mining the, the depths of what you actually have, right? There's a lot of things about somebody who's in an abusive relationship that are not able to be expressed. So that, in other words, there's a wealth of things that you love to do and who you truly are is buried so deep down that because you were never allowed to express it, that once you start going in to these places and start discovering who you truly are and getting the confidence to show it to the world, you're going to be surprised by how many people love being around you and the true community that you start establishing, not just for yourself again, but for your children and for your future. Opportunities for growth will be everywhere once you leave a toxic relationship. Seriously, the amount of self-discovery that you'll be able to have, you know, exploring new interests, pursuing your passions, establishing healthy relationships, all of these things will be available to you once you get out of the situation with the narcissist. It's especially difficult when people are so economically tied to the narcissist for them to leave, but I've seen it so many times with my own clients. When they leave the narcissist, they start discovering who they are, they start healing who they what they have gone through, and they start earning more money. It comes naturally because money is the fruit of a value tree. So the more value that you understand you have, the more naturally you will produce things that result in more money. And that's one of the hardest things for people to realize or to envision when they are still with the narcissist because that part of them has been so neglected. It hasn't been watered. They haven't been told that you can do anything and that you have an extreme amount of value. And hey, there's a way to monetize that thing. And that would add so much value to somebody else's life if you were able to provide that as a service or a product to somebody. And so once people separate themselves from the narcissist, they are able to have this whole other uh, sense of self-worth, sense of accomplishment, and not just because of the money, but because, again, of the value that they understand that they intrinsically have. Obviously, your social support will go up once you're able to leave the narcissist. The narcissist has likely isolated you from whatever support system you came into the relationship with. So any close friends, your family, maybe even your job or your religious community. But leaving the relationship would allow you to reconnect with maybe not only those friends and family, but build stronger support networks elsewhere as well. 
Improved physical health is another huge one when you leave the narcissist. A lot of times people don't even understand how much stress uh, and toxicity they have kept in their body because of the relationship. And this not only has an immediate effect on your body, right? The, the, the obvious things like uh, being tired or having your countenance look down, but also the long-term health, right? Heart disease is huge because of stress. There's all types of IBS issues and uh, other things that happen because of untreated or unmanaged anxiety. All of these things get trapped in the body. There's an amazing book called The Body Keeps the Score. And if you're not familiar with it, you can go check that out and really learn about why your body is responding to stress and responding to the situation. Uh, and, and maybe you don't even know that that's where those physical things are coming from. That book will help uh, kind of enlighten you about what happens when you are in a toxic relationship for so long. And again, not only can these things start dissipating once you leave the narcissist, but you can actually start pursuing health. You can actually start pursuing well-being and making sure that you're in places that are bringing in life, bringing in health into your body. New relationships, that's such a huge one. You need to have new, healthier relationships that are based on mutual respect, trust, and love. Actual value, both of you agreeing to certain terms and conditions, learning how to set boundaries. All of these life skills, you don't have the ability to utilize them right now, let alone develop them when you're in a controlling and toxic environment that you, you have with the narcissist. Another thing that you get, like I've already mentioned, is financial independence. You are able to regain your finances, to plan for your future, and have peace of mind. Leaving this toxic relationship can bring such a, a peace and relief, and it allows you to move on from drama and chaos, especially if that's been your norm, maybe your whole life is drama and chaos, and you can start learning how to enjoy a calm and more peaceful life for not only yourself, but for your children. Again, it's so important that your kids are given the chance to, um, to experience an environment that is free from chaos, free from fighting, free from gaslighting, and all of the other things that go along with the atmosphere that a narcissist creates. And if you're a stay-at-home mom, and it, you especially are wondering how you can leave a narcissist because you are financially tied to the narcissist, then I want you to check out this video next in which I discuss that issue specifically.